mentioned my presentation is just on raw power, so it's nothing to do with 5G or phased arrays or anything like that. So, so the presentation outline uh, will comprise of uh, micro application of gallium nitride power devices. What are the advantages of gallium nitride? Then uh, I work for Micro Technology, a principal consultant there, so I've been involved in development of an S band, C band, X band, and KU band solid state power amplifiers using GAN devices, which are packaged, and Baird I devices. The S, C, and KU band were designed for CW operation, whereas the X band is more for like a military application, so it was for a pulse requirement. So typical applications uh, that's emerging using GAN power devices is for radar systems, electronic warfare, space systems, medical applications, communication systems, and also industrial heating applications. And I'm actually doing a lot, a lot more work on the industrial heating applications using gallium nitride. I have all, a few clients uh, asking me how GAN technology can be used for industrial heating applications. So going on to the advantages of gallium nitride, I think uh, certain bits of these were covered in one of the other presentations. So basically, the GAN device, as we mentioned, you know, it can operate at higher voltage, uh, which means higher voltage, lower current, so also they have the capability of giving you higher efficiency. They also have much higher power density uh, as a device and efficiency. And the additional advantage is uh, gallium nitride is actually realized on silicon carbide. Uh, and due to the silicon carbide's properties of good thermal conductivity, uh, it gives you very good device reliability and performance. And the important thing is also the, the reliability. The MTTF, or the median time to failure, is you know, in the excess of 10 million hours at, at an operating temperature of 200 degrees. And this is sort of comparable to other devices, semiconductor devices. So this slide shows the, the main advantages going from which was the established technology of gas to GAN. So the key parameters are the band gap energy, the operating voltage, breakdown voltage, output power density, and current density. Now, the important thing, as you can see, is, is the power density per milli millimeter watt you can achieve from a GAN device. And the other benefit is these devices typically run anywhere from 28 volts up to 50 volts. So these uh, slides will now cover the, the actual design of the S-band SSPF. So what was the actual requirement? So the, SS, the S-band uh, SSPA was actually uh, realized by combining uh, 12 120 watt GAN devices. The frequency of, of operation here was 2.42 to 2.48. The target was to achieve greater than one kilowatt with a power added efficiency of over 40%. And the requirements to actually have the amplifier operating in CW mode, because uh, it's for an in, in industrial heating application. Now, if you've got, you're going to generate a thousand watts with roughly say 40% power added efficiency. With the amplifier generating that sort of CW power, you're going to be looking at uh, around about 1.245 kilowatts of power being dissipated. <laughs> so that meant, you know, uh, the, to de you had to design the actual individual stages for the highest efficiency possible. So these were designed by taking the 120 watt device and, and operating it in class F mode. So the single stage 120 actually was achieved around about between 65 and 70 percent PAE as a, as a standalone amplifier. So what I then did was combine 12 of them to try and hit the one kilowatt uh, power, and that was actually achieved by then uh, combining uh, using low loss uh, microstrip combiners. And again, the critical thing here was because of the heat generated, you had to have good thermal conductivity from the actual material as well. So that just gives you a concept of the, the S-band SSPA. So you have t 12 GAN devices uh, with a, a low loss isolator on each device for protection. 
Then you had the DC control electronics. Uh, it's based on four stages of application, uh, amplification. And all the, the deroid circuit that was used was uh, low loss, because every point one of a power uh, dB is critical. And all the components were using cost, cost based. So this slide shows you the, the actual realization of the 12 way power combiner and divider. So that's your power divider there, that's the, the combiner. And like I mentioned, it had, you had to try and minimize the insertion loss, handle uh, high power CW signals. And the whole thing was actually designed using an EM simulator uh, to, to ensure, you know, the, when you're combining 12 devices, the critical thing is the, the amplitude and phasing balance between each of the devices. So it was critical to to do the analysis using EM simulation on that, and then take that and, and then do a full simulation with the amplifiers. So that shows the actual measured performance of the 12-way combiner divider connected back to back. And from 2.4 to 2.5, the total insertion loss was around about one and a half dB. So, so each one was contributing about 0.75, and that's Pretty impressive for such a large structure, to, you know, combining 12 devices. And the, the, the actual in, input return loss was sort of was better than 15 dBs. So that shows the picture in the lab was the, the amplifier being tested. So that's the SSPA. There's a, a controller that uh, feeds the water cooled. So, so there's, that's the output stage here combiner, that's the divider, then you have all the additional pre-circuitry here. Basically, the, the design of the amplifier was such that there was a, a water channel underneath that was designed, so, you, so we could pump uh, cold water through the, the whole structure to keep it cool running under CW. And that's the actual amplifier being tested uh, uh, with a, it's a, a water-cooled waveguide load. So in terms of the performance achieved, so with 2.4 to 2.5 gigs, the gain was just, just around about 50 dBs for the whole amplifier, with the input and output return, return of 10 dBs. This slide shows the actual measured uh, compression point and power dedicated efficiency at 2.45, because that was the actual primary frequency for the industrial heating application. So as you can see, it was hitting just over 60 dBm with a PAE of around about 45%. And that's running in the CW mode. And this actually shows the, the, the power variation and efficiency from 2.42 to 2.48. So it's sort of achieving 1,050 watts RF with around about 45% PAE. And this is a slide where uh, the thermal analysis was carried out uh, using uh, computational fluid analysis. So, so this simulation here shows that if you had the amplifier with just assuming it's an airflow, then you know, surface temperatures were gonna hit around about 170 degrees, 168, that's sort of, sort of prediction. And this is the actual simulation when you actually use water cooling. So that sort of kept the whole thing to around about 23 degrees. Okay, moving on to the C-band uh, solid state power amplifier. Now this was designed uh, by combining 25 watt mimic bare GAN devices. Because of the, the wide bandwidth, uh, the design I went for was to actually use mimics, which again are commercially available. They have no ITAR restrictions on them. So the frequency covered was two to six gigahertz. The target small signal gain was to be greater than 50 dBs the target output power to be greater than 80, 80 watts, with the power added efficiency greater than 20%, and this amplifier needed to also work in the, in the CW mode of operation. So the concept for the, C, uh, for the actual amplifier, it, it, it sort of comprised of five stages. Uh, so you had four GAN mimics here that were gonna be combined with low loss combiners. Uh, so the crucial thing again here was to ensure that you, know, you had low loss material that you, you were gonna employ, especially with the sort of wide bandwidths. The amplifier was designed as a modular, uh, so each of these individual modules could be tested 
prior to full integration. And the technology that we used was uh, dye and wire bond technology. And the individual GAN devices were actually uh, sort of soldered onto tungsten copper carriers for thermal management. So that shows the picture of uh, uh, the 25 watt GAN mimic uh, power amplifier in a balanced arrangement. So you can see these are the mimics here. And then you had the combiner circuits next to it. And that's the actual fabricated amplifier, the two to six inch amplifier. So the measured small signal response for the amplifier over, to over, so this is measured over one to eight gigs. So from two to six, it's doing over between 50 and 55 dBs of small signal gain. Uh, and with the return loss of better than 10 dBs over two to six gigahertz. The measured output power, this is a saturated output power uh, over two to six gigs is over 49 dBm. So that's sort of hitting around about 80.5 watts as minimum, and the power added efficiency was above 20%. The X-band amplifier, now this was designed using package GAN devices. So we've gone from package to chip, now to back to package devices. Uh, and again, the requirement, because this was a sort of military application, the frequency of operation is 8.4 to 9.6. And so what I did here was to actually procure pre-matched devices and then use them to design the amplifier. So again, the target spec for the small signal gain was to be greater than 50 watts, uh, 50 dBs, but the target output power had to be greater than 500 watts. And this particular amplifier was going to op actually operate in pulse mode and the target power rate efficiency was to be at greater than 18%. So the actual concept to realize the amplifier basically consisted of eight stages of amplification. Uh, and I'm combining here eight 100 watt GAN devices. These are all uh, microstrip type couplers, but this four-way combiner had to be a, sort of a new design, had to be ultra low loss in order to try and keep the power. Again, the design concept was based on uh, a modular design, so each stage could be tested individually, and then you could integrate the whole amplifier together. And again, the crucial thing was to use low-loss low softboard PCB material. And all the components were, again, cot space components. So that's the actual fabricated uh, amplifier. So the requirement uh, had to ha it had to have a waveguide output. So the, the four-way com combiner in there is a mechanical structure that has been integrated with a waveguide output connector. And that's the actual measured res uh, small signal gain response of the amplifier. So from 8.6 to 9.6, it's achieving over 50 dBs of gain uh, with the input and output return loss of better than 10 dBs. The measured saturated output power, which is this plot here, is over 57 uh, dBm. So around about, minimum is around about 512 watts of uh, RF power. And the PAE is around about 19.5. So the next thing was to actually test the amplifier under RF input pulse conditions. So the, the so test was done by having a, a 10 a millisecond, a long pulse to see what, how it would behave under a long pulse condition. Uh, so this shows you the, so this is the actual trailing edge and this is the actual rise, the rising edge of the, at the output of the amplifier under RF pulse conditions. And the actual rise and fall times were approximately 25 nanoseconds. The, the droop performance of the amplifier was of the order of half, half a dBs. Now moving on to the KU band S uh, SSPA, the frequency of operation here was 14 to 16 gigahertz. Uh, now, what I found over this frequency, you could not purchase a pre-matched device, so the, the, so the design is actually based on uh, combining 10 watt GAN devices to try and cover the, the two gig bandwidth. Again, so the technology used here was based on uh, using microwave integrated circuit. Target output power was to be greater than 30 watts, 
with the power rate efficiency target to be greater than 10%, the gain, small signal gain to be around about 40 dBs. Uh, although the initial requirement was CW, this was also test, tested in the pulse condition. So the concept for this particular amplifier was again, it was based on nine stages of amplification. Again, modular design using chip and wire technology. Uh, so each of these stages could be tested individually prior to integration. Uh, it also had a, an attenuator so you could set the gain level on them. It had in also integrated uh, voltage regulators because it was all based on uh, MIC technology. So that shows you the actual completed fabricated KU band SSPA. So, so each of these stages are all individual amplify uh, stages with GAN devices in. So you have low power GAN devices all the way to the high power combined uh, devices that comprise here. So you've got the two voltage regulators here for the power supply for the amplifiers. So the measured small signal response for this amplifier over 14 to 16 gigahertz was over 45 dBs. And again, the return losses here, the input and output was better than 12 dBs. The measured saturated output power uh, was greater than 45 dBm, which is this plot here. So around about 30.5 watts was the minimum. And the PA was sort of averaging around about 12%, over 14 to 16 gigahertz. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you.